Welcome to The Cabral Concept, where board-certified doctor of naturopathy, Dr. Stephen Cabral, shares with you exactly how you can reverse aging, take back your health, and live a life full of energy and passion with new 20-minute episodes every single day to keep you healthy and engaged. Now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Excited to get into today's topic. We're going to be doing a Wellness and Weight Loss Wednesday show. This is a goal that over 55% of all Americans have, and it is to be able to lose weight. Now, they want to lose weight for maybe the sake of losing weight, trimming up a little bit. That might be one specific goal, but a lot of people want to lose the weight for health-based reasons, and that's why I love to be able to help people with that, because if you do, it decreases all-cause mortality. So it decreases your suffering from cardiovascular disease, from high blood pressure and stroke, from type 2 diabetes, from losing your vision, your eyesight, uh, blood flow to the fingers and the feet, the extremities, uh, can help with cancer, Alzheimer's disease, dementia, Parkinson's, and so much more. So that's, you know, my passion is helping people get healthy. And one of the best ways that we can do that is getting you back to your healthy weight for you. Again, not from a vanity metric, but we do know that there is a healthy range for most people, and we simply want to help them get to that. Now, that's why I found today's study very interesting. It just came out And this was just published a couple months ago, and I will link it up for you. Uh, It's in the, uh, I'll I'll link up the journal actually for you right now, but it's called The Differences in Adherence to American Heart Association's Life's Essential Eight Diet Quality and Weight Loss Strategies Between Those With and Without Recent Clinical Significant Weight Loss in a Nationally Representative Sample of U.S. Adults. A big name for a study. No idea why they chose that specific name, but the study was actually well done. Tens of thousands of people participated in this study. And what I want to do right now is break it down straight to the point of who did well, what do they follow, and the people that weren't able to lose the weight, why? What was the reason why? Okay, so here's how the study went. They gave them the guidelines to follow, which was the healthy eating, the nutrition. I'll talk about those things in just a moment. But then they also set up a parameter of 5% weight loss over the course of a year. So when I look at that, I want you to think about that for a moment. Let's say you weigh 200 pounds. 5% is only 10 pounds weight loss. Now, it's not that it's bad. I mean, that's that's admirable. Losing 10 pounds in a year, it's, you know, it's a little under a pound a month, but still like that's great. Like it really is a great step in the right direction and you know you're doing something correct, right? But in our practice, if you came to us at let's say you're 5 foot three, five foot four, maybe, and you weigh 200 pounds. Again, like no issues with that. Everybody has a health-based issue and yours might be weight. Okay. Then we're going to help you. What's your goal weight? What do we want to get to? And you might say, you know what? My goal weight is 150 pounds or 145 pounds, whatever you say your goal weight is for us. And we'll look at that and we'll say, okay, you know, that's, that's what we want to get to. Now, in order to get to 150 pounds from 200 pounds, what do we need to do? Well, we need to cross 190, 180, 170, 160, 150, right? So we're going to celebrate all those wins along the way, not just when we get to 145, 150. But now if I look at that over the course of a year, um, I'm going to say to the person, do you want to lose 50 pounds over five years, right? At 5%. Or do you want to lose 50 pounds over one year, right? Because there's a little bit of a difference. But when I look at it, it's not math, meaning like we can help you either way. That's, That's the truth. Like we can help you either way. But that 50 pounds when we look at it, is, is 25%, right? 25% of the body weight. But that's 25% of the body weight. It sounds like a lot, but it's unneeded. It's unnecessary on someone that's five foot three, five foot four. Like, so when we look at that, it's not like the body wants to keep that weight. There is some type of inflammatory-based condition that's affecting their blood sugar levels, their lipid processing, their estrogen levels, their estrogen progesterone, higher levels of cortisol, low, low, lower levels of uh, thyroid. Like there's all sorts of different reasons. And we just work through those reasons and we're able to help them. That's why it's different than this study. But this study used 5% as their metric. That means the people that didn't succeed in the study, which unfortunately was the majority, didn't even lose 10 pounds, didn't even lose uh, 5% of their body weight. You know, at 200 pounds, didn't lose that 10 pounds. They lost a couple pounds or maybe even gained some weight during the study. So that's what I wanted to share with you. And then we'll go over the people that were successful. They lost 5% or more of their body weight over the course of a year. So let's go into it right now. The five reasons that people weren't able to lose the weight 
and take it off. The first one was this. Now, again, whether you believe in it or not, like it's not that I believe in all of these, but I want to share with you what this, what the research shows. People that skip meals weren't able to keep the weight off. That's why they did this over a year because maybe they could skip meals over a few weeks or months and lose the weight, but they weren't able to keep it off. Okay. So skipping meals was one. I'll go over that in just a moment. The second one was this using prescription diet pills. Weren't able to stick with it. Number three, trying a low carb or a liquid diet or a fad diet over the course of that year. The fourth one was taking laxatives or vomiting. The fifth one was smoking. So literally nothing to do specifically with food, but smoking. Let's break those down a little bit further. Skipping meals. A lot of people like to do intermittent fasting. I recommend intermittent fasting inside of our clinical practice. Recommended it now for, well, for over 20 years, right? And so before it was popular, there were still people doing intermittent fasting. Now, the difference is this. Intermittent fasting has just gotten more severe over the years, right? Skip breakfast, skip this meal. And what happens is a lot of people then begin to overeat at other meals or they just can't stick with it. It's too stressful for them. It's too stressful in the body. It might work for some, but it doesn't work for all. It's why in our practice, we still recommend three meals per day. We do recommend 12 to 16 hours of intermittent fasting on a daily basis, but some people do 12 like seven at night to seven in the morning, right? Some people do 14. That's most people in our practice. They do six at night, stopping dinner, and then start at eight o'clock in the morning. That's the majority. And some stop at six o'clock at night and go till um, 10 o'clock in the morning. And then they do breakfast around 10. They do lunch around one. They do dinner, dinner around 5.30. And again, you have your own schedule. I understand that. If, if someone told me that was my schedule when I was in college, you know, I would laugh at them. I would say, okay, I can do breakfast maybe at 10, but I can't do dinner at 5.30. You know, my, my friends and I were going Going to the gym, we're studying, we're doing whatever, and we're going to eat dinner later. I get that. I understand it. It's all where you're at phase of life, but you can still work in your 12, 14, or 16 hours without skipping meals. So I think the issue there was actually frequency of eating. So when you have your in window open and just not depriving yourself, like if you feel deprived of food, you are going to overeat after some time. The second one, using prescription diet pills. Well, that's something that I can't ever recommend. I can recommend certain nutritional supplements that help boost metabolism, no doubt about it, but I don't recommend, then those aren't gonna make you lose like the Ozempics, those things like a lot of weight, right? I'm not saying that at all. They're gonna give you an extra edge as a thermogenic help with natural blood sugar regulation, et cetera. But these other diet pills, they also cause they can cause massive side effects like gastroparesis that I've talked about on a previous show and I'll link that up here today. So stephencabral.com slash 2798 for all of the research uh, and also for the big takeaways and additional continuing ed podcasts because if you're thinking about taking a semaglutide or you're thinking about taking one of these new diet pills, be careful. There's no free rides in this world that I know of at least. And uh, and they do come with side effects and sometimes they don't go away even after stopping the drug as, as I talked about on my previous show on this. Okay. The third one, trying low carb, liquid or fad diets. Well, here's the thing. A lot of people like to try different diets and I don't think there's an issue with that as long as there's a long-term plan. Let me give you an example. Our 21 day functional medicine detox or our fat velocity system, all have 21 day plans. So what does it do? Well, the, the truth is people want to lose weight. They're like if they're, if you're doing one of those plans. So guess what? Well, in 21 days, we can help you lose 10 to 20 pounds, depending on how much weight you need to lose legitimately, right? So if you need to lose more than 50, 60 pounds, you could easily lose 10, 15 plus pounds. Okay. So now what happens? Well, people see that it works. They've already feel great, but we know we can't continue that plan on forever. So then we move to a phase two. Right. And then after that, they continue to lose weight, but not at the same rate. Right. Now a pound or two a week. Great. That's much more realistic and, and good going forward. And then there can be a phase three, which is actually more of a maintenance based plan to where they get, get to um, enjoy themselves to a greater degree. Right. In terms of food and then also keep the weight off. So I think that. Fad diets and those types of things will never go away. We like to do it in a bit more of a healthy and scientific way, but it's not necessarily uh, for everyone. But I agree that fad diets will never work, right? Swinging the pendulum in one direction only makes it swing back harder and faster eventually to the other side. Taking laxatives and vomiting, that's, that's a different level. That's a different story. And I think in this particular issue, we'd love to be able to help those uh, particular people with these 
uh, disordered based eating uh, habits. But what we also want to do is work on the mindset around that. And it might be with self-worth. It might be with image-based issues. And they should also get a qualified uh, therapist and counselor to work with too, because there's the mind and there's also the body. We want to work with both. And the last one, smoking. Well, the sooner we get people to stop smoking, the better, because honestly, it increases essentially all-cause mortality, it increases oxidative damage in the body, speeds up the aging-based process. Yes, we all know someone that smoked and they lived to 90 years old. I get it. I understand that. But that's not the majority of people. You speak with any pulmonologist, they will tell you that smoking leads to COPD and massive issues as people age. And those issues kick in at least a decade before most people if you smoke. Okay. So those are the five main reasons of why people weren't able to lose the weight and keep it off. But here's what did work. So for the segment of the population that was able to lose more than 5% and keep it off for a year, here's what they did. Overall, higher diet quality. What they mean by that is they ate less processed foods. And I'm going to make this real simple because, you know, the goal was to teach you the five things of why it didn't work, not necessarily what did work, but I always have to give you what works, right? I always want you to have an action plan. I don't want to be doom and gloom and for you to only take the negatives away. So higher quality food. All that means is this. Can When you sit down to a meal, can I see this growing in nature, this thing in front of me? Can you see bread growing in nature? No. Can you see French fries growing in nature? No. Right? But you could see like a whole grain, like you could see oats, right? You could see... Um, you could see tomatoes from that, like a whole tomatoes, right? Like that could be one thing. You could see lettuce. Uh, what about in terms of French fries? No, but you could see potatoes or like yams or something like that. So the goal is not necessarily to deprive yourself of anything, but try to eat foods that you could actually see growing in nature as close to their natural state. The second one is this, closer to the ideal protein intake with less refined grains, which I just spoke about, less flours or added sugars. So I did a podcast a week or two ago about the number one thing that increases your waistline. And I want to link that up for you here today. Again, that will be at stephencabral.com slash 2798. And that is because the added sugars to beverages are what are the most detrimental for weight gain. Okay. And make sure that people, again, getting in enough protein. So people sometimes, uh, I think, misquote me as saying that I'm a low protein kind of person. I'm not. Uh, like by any stretch of the imagination. And what we want to look at is not overdoing protein and not underdoing, right? But when so many people are recommending uh, one gram per pound of body weight, sometimes I have to just try to share the other side of the science that says, you know, wait, hold on a second. Great for body transformation, but what about longevity? So I just like to share both sides. That's all. And the last part is this, and this might be the most interesting, that the people who are able to keep the weight off stuck to the 30 minutes per day on average of exercise. It's not a lot of exercise, but it's 30 minutes. It actually equates to five days a week times 30 minutes. So it's not every day. It's let's say like Wednesdays and Sundays off. So for those five days a week, people were getting 30 minutes of physical exercise beyond walking, beyond walking. They did cardio or they did some high intensity interval training. They did some type of training some type of exercise just for 30 minutes. And because of that, their body was now better able to do what? Balance blood sugar, very important, to be able to utilize that protein, to be able to uh, balance, I would say, even arterial-based inflammation and a lot of the other factors that they looked for over this. So one of the reasons why I like to bring this study to you is that it looked for consistency over time. It found that the most important things we still have at our disposal are high-quality foods, and exercise in our body. But as I've shared with you before, sometimes for many people, that's not enough. It's just not. And you need to find out if you're deficient in vitamin D, in zinc, in your B vitamins, if you have low thyroid, if you have high levels of cortisol, why your sleep is off. It found in this study, people who didn't sleep well had a tendency to gain more weight, right? So look for those underlying root cause factors as to why your metabolism might be low in the first place. We're happy to help with you over that. Just go to stephencabal.com. Click on the uh, shop part. You can look at the labs. You can work with my team and I to look for the underlying root causes. You can find the functional medicine detox there. You can find the fat loss, city weight loss system there. But again, you don't have to just work with myself and my team. And I share that all the time. Feel free to work with an integrative health practitioner. 
feel free to work with your local naturopathic doctor. Just find someone that specializes and able to help you in this particular area. Thanks so much, as always, for tuning in. I appreciate the subscribes, the reviews, the downloads, and always share the show with anyone you believe it can serve. And don't forget to tune back in tomorrow where we talk about how to actually balance exercise with the immune system and recovery so that you don't overdo it in one particular area and wear yourself out and start to age faster, leaving yourself more susceptible to virus and illnesses as well. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing day. Did you know that the body really only becomes sick or unbalanced in only two ways? Over time, you become deficient in vital nutrients and you also accumulate toxins internally and from the environment. As those nutrients diminish and you increase your total toxic load, your body then begins to show the first signs of dis-ease. It's actually quite predictable and the good news is that if we know how you began to fill up that proverbial rain barrel, we also know how to empty it to begin the healing process. I was fortunate enough to learn this ancient healing process from my mentor after suffering from debilitating diseases for close to a decade. It was only when I began to implement these techniques did I finally overcome my illnesses and go on to live a life of energy and vitality that I now enjoy. I'd like to share with you now what I discovered after traveling all over the world and how to combine the best of ancient healing wisdom with state-of-the-art science. Allow me to teach you exactly how I've been able to help over a quarter of a million people to empty their rain barrel and begin to transform their body and lives into what they've always hoped they could be. To get your copy of the international bestseller, The Rain Barrel Effect, simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash rain barrel.